blood in your brain, you're in the nerd's domain. Come on in, it's about to begin. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Nerds Domain. We're doing a What You Doing? I'm here with Shirley. Hello. And Johnny. Hi. And we're going to talk about what's geeky and fun that we've been doing. So, uh, Johnny, we'll start, start with you because you always read lots of books. Nope. Have you read anything? I have not. Not even web comics? Uh, no. I have really? not. I have not. Uh, no. I, I found a website um, that was pretty funny called Tickle. It's Tickle without an E. At the ED part, mm-hmm. like Tumblr, but mm-hmm. yeah, they just do internet memes and jokes. So you know, I can spend a little bit of time you know, sifting right. through those. So no. you, you read absolutely nothing. I should really it, prep ahead of time. Um, yeah, if I had known books, I would have always thought. But no, I haven't read. I read the the, the manuals of the Firefly board game. Uh, uh, yeah, it's Savage sort of, Worlds. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Firefly RPG. That's all games. Yeah. It's not uh, books. All right. Well, Shirley, have you been reading? A little bit. You know what? I'm looking at my Kindle to find out what I'm Oh, okay. <laughs> so we should have Johnny vamp for more time telling us all about this. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about the Firefly board game and yeah. games because I've been yeah. looking at that too. Yeah. I guess I'll talk about what I've been reading. I've been reading the rereading the first book of Empyreon. It's a, oh, name of the author. Now I need my Kindle. Wow. Um, be it's a sci-fi uh, book. Stephen Lawhead. Yeah, it is Stephen Lawhead. Um, it's a two-book series. Um, it's something, 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 and Siege of the Dome is the second book. Oh, I don't know. Um, I have the double book, but it's, like, the size of a freaking brick. Right. Like, I could uh, – the first book is Search for Fiera. Fiera. Fiera? Fiera. Whatever. Um, and it's set in like the far future, and there's this might sound familiar to you, Johnny. So there's this colony that okay. people have gone to, and this company has hired uh, Orion Tree and a and a crew to go check and see what's going on and why there's been no communication. <laughs> and to give just a little bit of information without spoiling too much, essentially there was some sort of uh, cataclysm, and the the colony broke into two people into two groups. And one set up this very fascist um, dictatorship based on social castes mm-hmm. and jobs within those social castes. And the other one went and, uh, you know, just they don't really have laws because they don't need them because people are nice. And, yeah, but like, hey, you know but, they're, but they're, but they're, I they're, didn't say that as bad. Thing. but their hippie yeah. culture is very much like Star Trek. Like, uh-huh. oh, uh, what did you do today? Well, that's cool. OK, well, let's go eat because, you know, somebody else brought that in for us. And, you know, it just all works out that well. You haven't made it that far. No, I haven't. So the first, seriously, the first book is... They're still on the ship. But no, well, yo, that where you're at, yeah. yeah. Like, Stephen Lawhead is descriptive. Verbose. And very verbose. Very uh, verbose, descriptive. I think, talks about words, talking words, not necessarily written well, words, but yeah. Verbose um, in his writing. Yeah. So. Um, but uh, the first book really deals with the what they call the Dome, which is the, the fascist dictatorship. And, like... The very end of that, they leave the, they flee the dome to go to this other place, or to, to run away and hopefully find another place. Hopefully, they're not even sure it's out there. And then um, the second book is like, let's go back to the dome and fix this. Oh. So, Interesting. yeah, it's it's a really really good book. Um, is there a problem with the? Um, Federation style culture as well as the fascist nope. style. Nope, just that they don't really like they don't want to impose themselves on the other group because right. they know it would be too much of a hassle. It, like it would be a giant war first to break that, yeah. and then to rebuild all that. And so yeah, interesting. Yeah, I like um, Stephen Lawhead's style of writing because I read um, a couple of books in, in his Pen Dragon Cycle. Yeah, he's Allison and Merlin. He's known for his. Um, Fantasy writings. This is some of his some of the sci-fi. few books that he's written in sci-fi, and it's from like eighty four, eighty six. <gasps> you have access to it. Oh, okay. well, you will when I, I will give you the Kindle it. back. Yeah. <laughs> so after the summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Interesting. So yeah, it's really good. He he has written a ton of um, fantasy books. Mm-hmm. It's stuff that I think you would enjoy because it's along the Pendragon. The R three based on Legend, yeah. Legends. I'm, I'm already sold. Yeah, <laughs> check it out. But um, 
I like I like the story. It, it it's really good. I've read the first book once before, but I got the book probably seven years ago, and I read the first one, mm-hmm. and then I kind of got into the second one, and then stopped, and then started. And I just figured I'd reread the whole thing. It's been too long, so. You know, now now that we've done all that talking about books, I, I technically haven't read the book, but um, you remember that one I was telling about, Broken? It's a um, the the audio yeah novel. yeah the one that could have been a podcast, right? Yeah, yeah yeah yeah. So that one has been interesting. Um, I'm only about halfway through it because I got distracted by other things, but it's called Broken by Cedric Johnson and Veronica Geiger. Okay. Geiger. I apologize for mispronouncing that. Uh, if I did that. Um, anyway, it's a um, it's a cyberpunk story. Okay. Um, but it's very low on the sci-fi. Cyberpunk is limited literally to the first pair of robotic arms. Okay. Um, a guy loses a guy boxer uh, loses his arms, and um, the the main character is a girl. Who's been working with this uh, doctor, and they've created the first pair of cybernetic arms. And then um, it's more focused on the the social aspect of uh, what that means of what cyberpunk. Uh, okay. The punk anything with the word punk on it usually is a is a exploration of social uh, yeah. problems. Yeah. Usually a low class versus a high class um, upper class, and the imminent changes that are coming because yeah. of what whatever's happening. Steampunk is Victorian age. Uh, yeah. Talking about the breakdown of aristocrats. Cyberpunk is the technology is going to level the playing field, basically. Yeah. Um, and or, or make the playing field even worse because only the rich can afford it. Right. Well, yeah. And then I mean, that's like, a potential. Yeah. At least. And then things like um, what what comes up is the the rich don't want to um, disfigure themselves to get the technology, so it gets put on the lower class who yeah. didn't have the power to fight back. Wow. Very, very interesting stuff. Um, so I, it's an audio podcast. It's free. It's called Broken. You can get it on voicesbyveronica.com. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't find it. I don't think I could find it on iTunes was the problem I had. Not, not that that's a problem, but like right. it's just not something on iTunes. So sure. it would be something you'd have to download as MP3 files. Right. And, and I guess it's all out there now. I think there's 23 chapters okay. because uh, – She's released another one that I haven't gotten into called Fear of Thought. So okay. I don't know anything about that, but you can get the entirety of uh, Broken, the cyberpunk novel, audio novel. Okay. And check out more from her. It's good stuff. All right. Shirley, did you find those books? Yes, I found the books. Yay. So one of them is um, I started Discovered. It's the Eternities Embraced series, um, book one by Ursula Estorati. Eternity. Eternities Embrace. Eternities Embrace. Series. Okay. Um, I guess I kind of like it. It seems like the um, her writing style leaves a lot to the imagination, and it feels like she doesn't finish out like a thought process or yeah. a scene, so it keeps jumping on. And then they got into some adult stuff real early into the book. Hmm. And I felt like, wow, that was really quick. They didn't mm-hmm. wait to build relationships or to finish out any type of, um, you know, scene advancement or character advancement until they got up into into those parts. So oh, were you not expecting no, I I mean adult things. No, I wasn't okay. at all. So that's that's a problem. I you, you kind of gotta let people know that. Yeah, that's coming. <laughs> well, I mean, it was like, and here we have these people, and there's a little bit of story, and hey, they're doing this stuff. And mm-hmm. I was like, she could have, like, it could have built up the story a little more to make it more comfortable to seem like a like a, a easy flow into. Did it what? feel like it? It didn't have. It didn't make sense in that place. Like those characters didn't make sense together yet because you didn't know them at all. Um, yeah, a little bit. I think so. So it could have been smoother. Yeah. Okay. A little smoother transition. Yeah. That's, what I was, okay. that's what I was in on. So I kind of like put that one to the side. And then um, I'm reading the one from that we received from Eggplant uh, Literary Production. Yeah. Uh, My Gun Sleeps Alone. Okay. 
So that's, I haven't got any very far into that one. That's unfortunate because so. that's a very lonely way to sleep. Yeah. And then um, uh, this starts my camping season, so I've been looking up a lot of camping recipes and stuff on camping. Oh, that's, that's awesome. And there's a ton of free like camping recipe books. I totally want to cook hobos. Oh, hobos are awesome. Hobos. <laughs> we can talk about ho- cooking hobos later, but I'll talk about it now. Yeah. Um, Let's so, just, just jump into that. So, normally, I, like, I'm like i considering. Oh, wait. You're leaving out the best part. You have to go under the train tracks, under yeah, a bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to. Make sure you have a big wooden stick. You want to. You want to. You have to make sure you knock And you want to select the hobo based upon, you know, fattiness and, and tissue compers, compliments. <laughs> no, um. So. <laughs> I've been considering adding a sixth like topic to our what you're doing just to talk about this kind of other stuff like cooking. So hobos are you take foil, tin foil, right? You make it into kind of a bowl. Okay. Then you put in the pants. Have we? Yeah. And stick them on the fire. Yeah. Okay. So you, with us, we, with it. us, with us, we put in carrots and potatoes and it's onions. Um, you can put in cuc- or, uh, celery and that kind of yeah. stuff. Anything that any tuberous vegetables yeah. that will cook well like that, and then some sort of meat, either. Uh, Raw or cooked, like broken up sausage or, or beef, yeah. or whole like kielbasa and that kind of yeah. stuff. Still chopped up so it cooks well. You stick it all together, you fold it in all in together, and you set it directly on the coals for about an hour. And it, they're awesome. And then you do each one of those individually for a person. So if I don't right. like carrots, I don't put carrots in mine. You yeah. like carrots, you like, you know. Yeah, back in the day, I mean, our family camp out thing, they did. Uh, yeah. I remember specifically. Corn peas, green beans, oh, that and sound bean bad. tips. No, it was actually pretty mm. good, but it was, that all sounds pretty good. It actually. freaked me out just so beef somebody tips. beef tips, you know, yeah, just, beef tips, yeah, like, um, yeah. Nice. So, I mean, it, it was probably the cheapest beef available because it would feed like hundred people. But yeah, yeah. Um, those family campouts. I was thinking about one of those this morning. Just, right. just how creepy that old building was. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I remember it freaked me out as a kid. Somebody handed me a Hagging a tinfoil and saying, "Here's your dinner," but it was it was actually good. Yeah, they are. I like them. Yeah. Um. So the other thing I've been reading since we're kind of off of Shirley and I kind of forgot to mention this was I am catching up on, and by catching up on I mean restarting uh, questionable content. You don't know that. One. You don't know that web comic? Really? It sounds familiar, but I'm not. Huh. With what's the uh the premise is there's this guy Martin. And he's all indie rock. And uh, this girl named Faye moves in with him, and she's very angsty, and there's some problem why she can't be with Martin, even though she likes Martin and Martin. Martin likes her. And it develops into this giant story. There's a place that Faye ends up working called Coffee of Doom. Yes. Okay. That, yeah. That's what that, – that did it. I remember this. I haven't read that in a long time. Well, I, I, I read it before I met Shirley. Yeah. I mean, he's been doing it for – since 2003, so yeah. – um, and he's still doing it, and, his, and it's nice to watch his art style um, improve and change. And he really gets like into shading and that kind of stuff, which is great. I think that's awesome. Um, but it, it's a fun story, and it's not anything terrible. Um, they had there's pint size. He's an anthro PC, so he's a little robot PC, yeah. um, and uh, he likes to catch things on fire. And at one point, he had he got a new body, a new chassis that might have been government issued, and he shouldn't have had it and had a yeah. laser in it. Yeah. Shirley's clearly listening to all of this. I yeah. am. So, um, I really like that. And then I've also. I don't been, you remember you were reading this I remember Atomic Robot. This isn't a comic book. This is a web comic. It be um, in the computer. Yeah, or the iPad. Well, iPad. This is what I've been reading in bed the last week or so. Oh, oh, that. Um, and then <laughs> I've also been reading Failure to Fire, which is a strange web comic about this guy that lives in Texas and works at a gun shop and his foray into um, kind of the alternative lifestyles that exist. Okay. So mm. it, it, it's interesting. It's a lot more risque than questionable mm. content, but it, it's it's interesting to watch another person's view of that kind of stuff and, and how this guy can be so very liberal except for guns. Like, like the guy that writes the comics are, is all about guns and like – has political like comments in some of his comics and then does like side comics where he just does political satire. But then like, he's clearly liberal about everything else. So it's this weird, like strange dichotomy of how he can be super liberal, except you can't take his guns. So whatever. Um, let's go on to podcasts. I'll start. Cause Shirley has been listening to oh so many podcasts. I 
tired. I have oh, spent the God. last week catching up on probably four months of Critical Hit. Wow. Yeah. Um, which has been kind of fun to w- listen to it all at once. I like that. I forgot how much I like that. I don't necessarily think I like listening week to week to that kind of podcast. Um, picked up a little bit of Heroes and Villains in there. And listen to that, and then I listen to some Guy Fawcett stuff, and some When Nerds Collide, and I'm not just plugging the stuff on our network, uh, but uh-huh. I have been listening to stuff on our network. Um, and then I picked up some Good Job Brain in there at one point, too, and I listened to ours, because I'm trying to catch up on that, so. Yeah. You don't remember I haven't really picked up on any, any podcasts. I've been, like, doing a lot of new music. Um, I should have totally have a music corner. Um, but... Like I really like the show Vikings, mm-hmm. so I um their theme song, I um uh, did a hunt on their theme song and it's by Fever Ray and they have some really good um, music out. So that's mm-hmm. my podcast is music. I'm a music podcast. Well, we'll we'll talk more about music at the end. And you can you can elaborate a little more on that because I would like to talk about music. That would be so bad. Johnny, any pod? You don't listen to podcasts, do you? Uh, that is all I do uh, <laughs> at work. So Besides work, take my but, place. yeah. Um, uh, you you turned me on to uh, Good Job Brain. Yeah. And was it you that did the stuff you stuff you missed in history class? Yeah. Yeah. I like those because they're short. Yeah. Stuff. Well, see, I like them. Or I I dislike their shortness at times because they spend five to eight minutes of their half hour show doing commercials. Well, and you're assuming it's a half hour show. Sometimes they're like 12 minutes. Some of the older ones are 12 Okay. 12 well, minutes. that, that yeah. could be, I, I, I listen the, since I've started listening, I haven't delved back into the back catalog. Yeah. yeah. The, the but you like, ones. you like history I do. stuff. I do like the stuff in this history and the stuff you should know, which yeah. is uh, sort of a sibling podcast. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of stuff you yeah. should I kind of want to get into uh, stuff they don't want to know. Yeah. I want to That's interesting. That I, don't um, I would also suggest if you really like history, Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. Yeah, I the tried that one. The only downside is it's dry, yeah. but it's, and it's also very long. But right. they come out like once every three months. So, yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's not bad. It just, I, have, I haven't gotten into that one. It's um, a little harder to fit in your schedule with a three-hour runtime. Right. And I like I, – see, I like variety. You, you said oh, that, yeah. uh with critical hit, you you like listening to a huge block of it. I like mixing it up. I actually had a, an order on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays of uh, TMS, whatever Smodcast has put out, yeah, and then gaming podcasts the rest okay. of the night. So I actually have an order to, that I put things in. Yeah, uh, I, I think I think critical hit. I like it that way because they're telling a story. Sure. It, like TMS, I liked listening to every day as it came out. Yeah. Like when I was when I was working at Adidas, like literally it would be, oh, uh, download TMS. Now I listen to it. Right. So that I liked because it, it like that that kind of like and if like this kind of podcast that we're doing right now, I would listen to that as it came out and happily do so. Right. But with Critical Hit, where they're telling this longer story, I well, would rather listen to giant chunks of them. So. Sure, but I I'm not that way. Oh yeah, I like to get my episodes in. So, um, what else? Is there any other? No, that pretty much covers it. Okay. New stuff that I've picked up because I'm I'm almost at uh, critical pod mass and have no more time to fit in more podcasts. Yeah. Because I, I well, hopefully one will pod fade. Right. <laughs> I can almost oh, fit in. I have I have I work an eight hour shift, mm-hmm. and assuming. Or if everybody is posted on time, I download uh, most of my stuff for the day on my way to work. Mm-hmm. Listen to the first one, usually TMS um, or major spoilers if it's a Wednesday. Um, so I start one in the car on the way to work, mm-hmm. and if I'm not bothered by a lot of interruptions, I don't have I don't turn off podcasts until I get home and go to sleep. Oh wow! So. Okay. Between eight and ten hours of podcasts a day. Yeah. yeah, I was something like that, except people like to bother me in my job. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm lucky in that way. I don't have I, to turn them off if I don't want to. I work at the front desk and into the phone and yeah, do all so the reception stuff, so I don't get to hear that. Yeah, it, it takes a very specific kind of job it does. to be able to do that. Oh, and then there's nerd parents. 
Oh yeah, American yeah, yeah. Parents is fun. Oh, yeah. Which uh, uh, you were on? I was. Uh, what a week and a half ago. Uh, yeah. Have they done two since I was on? It, it, it was, this past week, yeah, just one. So yeah, been, they've done one since I was. Yeah. On. So my episode came out uh, right before Easter. Yeah. Um, and I did notice that you you tried hard, but the girls talked a lot. Sam, Sam Jane talks and, a and lot, I, and I, I, you know, I, I, like I said, I like her, and you know, I like, I like listening to what she says. But yeah, she did talk. I think I think if you were on there like on a regular basis, oh, sure. you'd learn how to interject yourself yeah. a little bit better. But it was clear like you were like, oh damn, oh, mind you guys are gonna keep going, somebody, so I'm yeah. not gonna do it. Which you know, yeah. it, that's one of those things you get to, to used to as you learn who right. people yeah. are. It'd also be easier if you were all in the same place because oh, yeah, then you can see visual cues. Yep. Um. So totally. yeah, but otherwise it sounded great. I was no, it, I was really it was fun and and it's a good it's a good show to listen to. I wrote a review for it if you want to know more about it before we get into it. But it's, yeah. uh, it's all about parenting in a modern world. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, enjoyed, and regulations. I enjoyed the one I listened to. Um, I don't know that it would be something – well, I listened to the one well, you were on. Okay. But I don't know that it would be something I would add to my list. Well, you're – But that's just me. I'm, I've forgotten how old is Aiden now. Ten. Ten. Yeah. So um, the uh, hosts have a – Two year old, uh, yeah, four year old, and and it is a, it, yeah, it seems to be so a much younger. I think you had the old, you had the oldest kid on there with five on my show. Yeah, yeah on my so show. I mean Carrie's on there with a fourteen and special needs twelve year old. Okay, but, um, she also has a young child. And that's yeah. usually the focus of the show. The yeah, child. although I did hear like some really cool stuff. There was the the chore thing, chore monsters. That awesome. sounds kind of awesome. I, I like we're that. Get, we're looking into it um, ourselves and. I tried to start Gwen on it today, and she wasn't too thrilled with the idea. So we'll, yeah, we'll build up to that. Yeah, no one's ever thrilled about chores, not even adults. No. So, um, so let's get into games, uh, Shirley. Um, I really like uh, Takenoko. Takenoko, yeah. Yeah, we've been playing that a couple of times at the store. It is a um, it's a game with a little panda, it's... and you have um quote unquote quite like quest cards. You have to either get some a certain amount of bamboo built on the on the um on the hexagons. The, 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 the plots, the, yeah, the, the growing plots, plots yeah. Land, um or you have to eat a certain amount and then turn them in and you get to turn your card in. Or um uh you build lay down plot, plots, yeah. Lay down plots in a certain arrangement to get the points for that card. It's a points-based victory, so um, the amount of points that you have on your card will dictate if you want or not mm-hmm. at the end of the game. Um, and you do this by moving, rolling a die, and then following, um, what is it? Is it? It's not a cue card. That you have like card, a little worker, a little, you have a placement card that yeah, keeps track of what you're doing. card to yeah. keep track of what you're doing. And when you roll the die, that's your extra uh, move. Then you get your two regular moves, and um, and then throughout all that, that's how you build your plots and irrigate them. And then you move your panda to eat, so you can get the so you can get that for the card to fulfill a goal. Or you move your the farmer so that he can plant and grow bamboo, and um, then that uh, fulfills. It's an interesting, like yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting game because it's it's more mm-hmm. relaxed. I mean, it's still competitive, it's very relaxed. but you're not yeah. uh, you're not getting in each other's ways mm-hmm. all, all that often. You uh, can sometimes yeah, with moving the farmer and the panda, but yeah, it's yeah. not very often. And I guess um, it's not very inter player interactive. Like it's you're not. busy doing your own, you know. Yeah, so you can have a goals. conversation. And it's not your turn. Yeah. Rather than worrying, and you know, so. And then, um, uh, Nikki down at Game Paradise and Matt tried to introduce me to, um, a deck building game that's not really a deck building game. Yeah, I was just it, looking it that up because I couldn't remember the name of it. It's called Puzzle Strike. Puzzle Strike. And, um, it looks really interesting. We got into, like, one hand of it. And what you do is you try to obtain these little discs to start building your deck. So that you can do things. So and instead of we didn't get to the do things part. Uh, so. <laughs> instead of cards, you have tokens yeah. that are gems of some sort and or actions. And the idea is to make the other person have ten gems. And when that happens, the game is over. So you're throwing gems at them. 
Okay. But they can like block those gems or break those gems, and um, or it's ten points of gems because some gems are worn. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but they're all little tokens, and you put them in your bag, you shake it up, and you draw them out. Okay. The gems you use to throw, you also use to buy. So you don't want to throw too many at once because then you have yeah, nothing right. to buy with. Yeah. So it's this like it's really interesting. It works really well as a two player game. It supports up to four. It, and Nikki says that, and she's right. It looks like it would get very very chaotic. Or everybody gangs up on one person with more than one. Mm-hmm. Worth more and than that's one. just bullying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Puzzle Strike, I played it once, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I would like to play it again, but it comes in this hideous pink box, and you look it's at it, and you're like this. It's a cute pink box. But it looks like a fluffy like, Yeah, it looks game. like a really girly game. Like, like, you look uh, at it, and you're like, oh, that's a girl game. I don't want to play it either. I looked at it and I was like, like, this game doesn't take itself seriously, so it can't be a serious game. If they change the cover on the box, I think that a lot of people... You know the chibis? It has a lot of that chibi um, art style. Like Arena? Yeah, it kind of looks like Crossmaster Arena. But the same thing with Crossmaster Arena, it's like white and green, so it's very gender neutral. So anybody who is inclined to look at anime things isn't going to think, oh, this is for... Yeah. Girls this is not going to interest me. Yeah. yeah, this it's it, it's a good game. It's yeah. just yeah. surprisingly not set right. Yeah. So, but it, it sounds like there's nothing specifically about it other than it's <laughs> gems, which you know, jewelry is. Yeah. Quote unquote for girls. You know, yeah. Um, well, and you get a character, and I couldn't tell because there's no pictures of the characters, but I guess your know, all characters could be girls. If that could be a thing. Like, special power. You get three special tokens. You get a ten token starting quote unquote deck. Yeah. Um and it's all set up and then three of those are specifically from your character. I see. And those are all actions and they're all very specific to that character. So, so it sounds like maybe they could use a little uh, imagery design. Eh, they, yeah. They but it's a, it's a fun game. What else? Any yeah. other games? Um I don't know. I'm kind of finding that I really am starting to like a deck building games more than anything like that's kind of my niche of what I like right now. Nice. And um, we just played Ascension a couple weeks ago, which I had yeah. never played before. And I I really like it. I love it. Um, and then Matt found it, or a friend found it, and let Matt know that it was on the iPad and yeah. iPhone. So we downloaded yeah, it to the it iPhone and iPad. That day. And you can play it through the game center with somebody. Yeah. If you if you get online on your iPhone or iPad, you can play it through the game center. So. Um, yeah, Ascension is uh, interesting because it's a buy mm-hmm. and also combat thing, and you beat things up and kill them to get their points, and that's how you win is get the most points. But there's also a cultist out there that never goes away. You just keep whacking the cultist. There's an unending Which is plethora. kind of awesome because you keep getting those points. Yeah, so there's this unending plethora of cultists, and all it does is give you a point. But it's always an option to use yeah. that. So uh, I like it. It's it's interesting. It has a bunch of expansions, which are not free on the iPad. Right. But, you know, eh. So uh, we played that. And I'm trying to think. And we played the new D- DC Deck Builder. Did you play that with me yet? Um, no, I haven't no. played that one with you First yet. or second expansion? This is the first expansion. Okay. So this has, like, Shazam. It just came out, surprisingly. It was They were supposed okay. to have it. It's supposed to have, they had it at Gen Con showing off, but it was like a beta. That's what it was. It was supposed to come out last November, and it ended up coming out March. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sounds great. Now every character has a card <laughs> that, that's specifically theirs they can buy. There's They're also in the deck, but you can buy that one. It sits aside, and you can buy it oh. any time. So, so, so the the card that has Superman it, on it, it. But it's not the most powerful one. Like in the, like, the one in the yeah. deck is still so, the best. Like Shazam is one of the characters, and it's like World's... Marty is mortal. I think mm-hmm. that's his thing. That's his like that's in the deck. Character. That's not what you get at all. Okay. You get a separate card that's also very much him, and it fits his theme and his power. Um, and I like it. So like Batgirl, Batgirl's thing is you can discard a punch, or you can take two punches. You can discard a card to take two punches from your graveyard and put them in your hand. But her card that she gets—that's her regular power. Her card says that when you discard a punch, you do a thing. Okay. So you could discard a punch to do a thing and then take two punches. Right. So it it's just this really, like, it works all together. And then it has all the lanterns in it, or all the rings in it from yeah. the cores. And if you play Kyle Rayner and three lanterns, game's over, you win. Nice. So it's a lot like the Suicide Girl. If you play three Suicide Girls, Suicide, suicide, suicide squad. Squads, not Suicide Girls. Yeah. Suicide Squads, if you play three Suicide Squads, you win. Yeah. This one's if you play Kyle Rayner and three rings. And all of the rings are good. Yeah. Um, except for... I think red is very destructive, well, which makes sense. That's yeah. purpose. So, 
Um, what else have I been playing? Um, uh, was it Builders? The Builders, Is Middle that Ages. By Asmodee or was it That's by Asmodee. One or the other? That's Asmodee. Okay, yeah. It's a worker, literally a worker placement. You you recruit workers and buildings to build the buildings with the workers and you get points off the buildings and more money. So you have to like, if I have an apprentice, apprentice only has two dots. There are four categories, stone goal or stone knowledge, something and something. Apprentice will only have two dots in any of those. So it may be like two in stone or two in knowledge, or maybe one in stone and one in knowledge. You have to pay that, that apprentice two points to go somewhere. But then there's like craftsmen and masters and they go all the way up and the, the, the highest one has five points divided across them. You have to pay in five to go somewhere. Mm-hmm. So then you're trying to build these buildings and those dots match up directly with the dots on the building. And you build those and you get the points and then the buildings pay you money back. Nice. So it's this like weird cycle. Um, I played it a couple of times. I like it. Uh, I like the, the idea of it. It's easy to learn and it's very, very quick pace. Like we were done – Nikki got up a couple of times because she had to help customers, but we were yeah. done in 45 minutes. It's the Builders Middle Ages. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at it on board yeah. game. It's, it's a lot of fun. I'm trying to think of anything else I've played new recently. I bought the Star Trek deck building game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did I tell you that? Yeah, you did. So, um, I haven't opened it yet. I've yeah. opened the box, but I haven't opened the in- inside stuff. Right. Um, Which uh, version did you buy? The original? The, the original series. It, you know what? It was on sale for yeah, like well, there's there's also yeah. the next generation yeah. and the board invasion yeah next generation i think there's also a deep space nine one is there i think so yeah, yeah i know um but it, it's not a bad game i like it it's it's another deck builder and i want to open it up and play it some before i really decide if i like it or not but for 14 yeah. bucks 15 bucks it's, it's totally worth it it's an interesting game in that it's like like you were saying i've not played ascension yeah but you have building and combat you have to worry about. Yeah. And then the um the card the card pool is set, the deck is what it is. Yeah. And you have nine to buy every every round. And that's different. I mean, that's like the DC one where you see what yeah, you can buy. Yeah, absolutely. But then like um, Dominion, you know what you can buy every round. Yeah, so they call it when when it's a set out like DC or Star Trek, it's called an alley. Okay. And otherwise, I forget what it's called. The other thing that's called right, what Dominion would call. Yeah, I want, so, so Dominion has a, a like a new the newest set is called Dark Ages, and I really want to play it. I keep so I'm working at the game store now. Right. Part of my job duty is to count the games as they get checked back in, and I've counted Dark Ages probably twelve times, <laughs> and I've only been working there like six weeks. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but it looks like a lot of fun, and you can just throw the base cards in with it and run with that. Um, what else have I? What else have I played lately? Oh. We need to talk about Firefly. Okay. So I read through Firefly. You did too. The RPG. The RPG. The, the okay, RPG. Yes, the RPG. Um, from Margaret Weiss Productions. Yep. Uh, what do you think? It's it's interesting. Um, it does a great job of capturing the feel of Firefly. Um, we mentioned before we turned on the mic that uh, it's really like it really focuses on playing through the story of the original crew. Mm-hmm. Um, and provides you with their character sheets. As well as episode guides. And episode guides, which really turns me off. Like, I don't mind playing Mal and Wash and yeah. Zoe. Those, you know, that, those, they're great characters. But I don't want to just rehash yeah. the episodes that I've already watched. What I took the episode guides as is this is what, has, this is a story that happens in the Firefly universe. Yeah. Make your own stories based on well, this. And, that's how I would approach it. And it, it treats it very much like it's a TV show. Even your game is a TV show. Yeah. Like Everything you have, it, it talks, it talks to you about here's what you need to do as a writer. Here's yeah. what you need to do as a director. Here's what you need to do as a producer. Yeah. And here's what you need to make the audience happy. Right. And how do you do those things as a storyteller? To get to hit all of those and how right. to work with those, so I think looking back at those those episodes that yeah. they've already done, I think helps would help me even as a new storyteller, kind of uh, look yeah. at those, disassemble them, and see how they did that. Which right. I think that's great. I really it like is. it. It's it's well written and, and like I said, it 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 would be great for a, a teaching yeah. setup. Oh yeah, yeah. And then I would take it and run with it in my own way. Um, the one thing I don't care for. In, in Margaret Weiss systems in general, is the lack of advancement in the character. This one had a whole chapter on that. It did, but did you actually? I did didn't read too hard. Okay, on it. yeah. So that, like, I got through the basic rules, and I did. I didn't get into like the 
the the nitty gritty of combat. Mm -hmm. And I I just I wanted to know how you know how does character dance work if it's even in the game. Yeah. Um, and uh, basically, if you show up for a session that's an episode, mm -hmm. you get one XP. And if eventually you play a few sessions, you you can spend like three or four episodes um, to advance one of your skills one die yes. size. Yeah. Because this game uses D4 through D12, um, you know, and then the highest number wins on the roll. So yeah. anyway, um, it's very simple in that system. You roll two dice and whoever has the highest number, well, you roll more than two dice. You, Add your two highest dice together unless you spend action points. Yeah. But anyway, it, and I don't, you know, for me, like we've talked about it uh, with other games, the advancement is part of the fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there needs to be a reward for playing. I mean, you know, character development is one thing. Like I like, you know. Yeah. You need to have character development in to, in a story. If you're just sitting down and killing monsters and not developing your character. Yeah, Might as well go put not... a video game on the Xbox and tell your friends to go home. Yeah. Um, you know, so the, to tell a story, you need a band, a character events. But I also like rewards of yeah. more powers, more skills. Yeah. And, and Firefly just doesn't have that. There's shifts you could, you could, you know, reward the players with money and then allow, allow them to upgrade their ship. You could give them a less than fully fleshed out ship and allow them to upgrade and unlock yeah, yeah. components there, but it's just not it's not where I want it to be. Yeah. X Men was very similar and they yeah, had yeah. they had three ways to gain your XP in a game and what you could spend it on was very limited. So Yeah, definitely. That is a downside in all of apparently all of Margaret Weiss's games, but no, they're good I, they're still very interesting systems. And looking at their system I think the focus is very heavy on the story it telling is, and, the, and the character development and not necessarily about the, the statistics. I think it's the same thing you said with, uh, uh Wushu. Wushu. It's, yeah. it's, it's more about the story and having it fun is. with it. And I think that that, that might be a flaw to that system for some people. For me, I really yeah. do want to know, like at the end of this, what did I get out of this? Like yeah. I want my XP, I want my gold and I want to move on. Right. Um, I think that's one of the biggest problems I had with, we were talking about City of Heroes earlier. Yeah. That's one of the biggest problems I have with City of Heroes is, was that I fight all these villains. I go up and level. That's great. But, like, I don't have gold. I don't have – I can't buy anything. And, and all the stuff I want to buy, I have to wait until I hit, like, cap level and then just get all the influence that I need to go buy all those that, that stuff because it's so expensive. Well, and um, Champions Online, mm -hmm. um, you don't – is 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 another – Okay, we're talking about we moved on to a <laughs> different superhero game yeah. MMO RPG on the computer on the internet. Um, in Champions Online, you don't have you have item slots and you can go and buy the item slot, you know, buy items mm -hmm. that better fit your character. Um, but yeah, the I mean it's it's better because there are things I can buy. Yeah, I have, you know, uh, I get these items. I can break them down into component pieces and then. Construct they, you know better items yeah. at the you know than what I can buy in the store even so there's yeah. there's a little bit of that you might like, you know there's another reason to check it out but um, yeah I mean it's not as good but it, it's it's still kind of there it's so better than tabletop that though right what the uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah oh yeah that's how it is it's a, oh. yeah, it's, it, it, um, when you say RPG I think it's a oh no no it's it's a tabletop um and you could buy it too. Margaret Weiss Productions was kind enough to give us a review copy and this isn't our full review I think we're gonna get deeper into it after we've gotten a chance to to really play it play once. either play through it once fully or get deeper into the rules and really hash mm -hmm. out exactly what they're like but mm -hmm. it has a lot of the, the cortex system is there so all the combat stuff is still similar. It's it's more about the book itself. I will say that the book for Firefly, the only thing I felt like it was missing was a setting. It it's very light on the setting. Like well, it, yeah, it doesn't. Whole to do it. <laughs> it, it doesn't talk about Blue Sun except very basics. Because they didn't go. There. Yeah, didn't and care. so so I want more of that information. Sure. I want to know what happened to Shadow. I want like there's all the setting information that I'm sure I could find fan fiction a thousand places for it, and maybe mm -hmm. I should just do that. But at the same time, I want uh, – this is the canon. This is the world you're going to come into. Right. And I didn't get that feeling from it. So that was kind of – that was a little frustrating yeah. um, for me. 
Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of weird because, like, with with the X with the Marvel Universe game, you could play in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. There's all those comics out there to read. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could read the the Firefly and Serenity comics that are in production, but again, they're focused on the crew. Yeah, and there's so and the there's world, only like yeah the, 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 the universe around them is kind of small. Yeah, or yeah. or not explored enough. Yeah. And, so. and you know what? Maybe maybe it just takes time, and maybe I should be patient. And, I, and and they'll come out with a setting book, maybe because they've done the Serenity book, which right. is specifically about the movie, and this is the Firefly book, specifically about the show. It sounds like they need a setting book that's specifically about the setting. Right. So that maybe, that's my yeah. opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it could be interesting. But I could also see doing a Firefly game with that book. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's not a ton of advancement, but another ship and yeah, just play it. And yeah, I already have an idea for a heist. Even, yeah. So yeah, we should do a side quest. Maybe I doubt it. I don't yeah. think that one will. Right now, Matt won't let us break out of the computer system. Yeah, Matt's very very strict about that because he's a jerk. Like, we no, Firefly. no, I don't need that reavers. Would be a very good I don't need system. reaver cultists. Yeah. That would be Awesome. Well, they would just terrible. automatically be converted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cthulhu like, shows up, all the Reavers get behind him. I mean, it's just, yeah. Yep. Reaver invasion would just yeah. be the yeah. cultist invasion. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. So let's get into apps. I'll start this time. Uh, I just started, or I just downloaded, because it was free, it's not my fault, uh, Warhammer Quest. Um, I downloaded it too. It's a lot of fun. It's addicting. It's long. Uh, I got to the point where I have one last quest to do, and then it's kind of I'm done with this until it, I can buy the expansions, and I don't really want to pay the 2.99 per expansion. I also don't want to pay for the individual characters I want besides the four I get. I paid Jesse. What? <laughs> Two expansions plus all the characters was like eighteen dollars, and I don't want to pay eighteen dollars for a game. Is it? You just complained about me buying games. Well, stop buying games. <laughs> Um, but that's been, that's what been what I've been spending a lot of time on. Um, and that's a, that's the biggest one. If you've played the old board game Heroes Quest, it has a lot of the same feels to it. Oh, really? Um, you get four characters, you go through a dungeon, you, you attack stuff, you kill it. I mean, it's, it's, and Hero Quest was put out through Milton Bradley for Games Workshop. Nice. So it was Warhammer stuff. It just was dealt with in a more kid friendly yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. So um well I haven't really been doing much else on apps. Yeah, Surely Surely you've not been I'm, I'm trying to think of what new apps I've downloaded. Castleville. Castleville. No, Castleville. I'm still doing Castleville. Castleville. Ooh, I did get it on Tumblr and Pinterest. I downloaded the History Channel app so that I could watch my games <laughs> on my phone. Um what else did I do? There's a couple. Oh, Callan Mob, which I'm not going to go into that very much because I want to do a review of it, but um, it it is it's a very good app to be able to if you have like several different calendars on Google and subscriptions to other friends' calendars on, on Google, you're able to see all of that when you download Callan Mob. Yeah, it's so uh, on our. I own. really like it because it helps you keep me. I don't know how it works on a Google phone because I haven't had one yeah. forever. But I, our iOS app, oh. app, calendar app, does not let us see any but our calendar. Yeah. And any email address you signed up for that you you access the calendar on your phone. Yeah, so like I only see mine. See I only see my email or my calendar and Nerds Demand calendar. But surely, and I like share a calendar. It doesn't show. Yeah. I'm so. Not yeah. Um, oh, and um, my cousin Tim, I was down helping him with his phone and getting him set up um, to get come into the 20th century. And he introduced me to Glide, which is a video chat app. And it's a lot of fun. It's really quirky. You don't get really, you know, adult with it. And um, I think it's about a two, you can take a two minute video with it. So um, he showed me some videos where his friends are just walking around and talking to him. And instead of, and it's instant. So instead of, um, instead of chatting back and forth and typing, you're just, you know, talking to each other face to face, kind of like FaceTime. Um, but it instantly, you know, notifies you and you don't have to have the, something like FaceTime continuously running. You record your message. It, they automatically get it. 
and then they can automatically respond to your message. So it's like so, video texting. Yes, exactly. It's called Glide. I like it a lot. It's a lot of fun. Um, but that's all. I, that's all I'm doing. Like I said, we're getting into camping season, so. You have any um, camping apps? Any camping? Can you? Oh my gosh! I should look up camping apps. Okay, do that after the show. After the show. Oh, okay. That's fun. Oh, and um, if you get, if you're really into um, you know being out on, at nighttime, Skywalk is amazing. Oh yeah, Skywalk is awesome. Uh, John, apps. Um, I don't have a whole lot. I. For some reason, I can't break myself away from Clash of Clans. <laughs> even, even though you've stated how much you don't like it. Yeah, I well, and wow. I'm at the point where everything's taking a day or two or three to yeah. finish. Yeah. Um. So, like, every so often, I'll, the thing will notify me, "Hey, this thing happened." And I'm like, "Oh, well, I'm gonna go get into it for a few minutes." And you're there for and half an hour. Not even that long. I just I collect my gold and oh, ether. Really? I assign my builders to do the next thing and move on with my day. So I yeah, guess they I got my birthday hooks in me. I can't do that with Castleville. Like yeah. it notifies me that something's there, and then I have to get on there, and I end up doing like fourteen other things. And I, well, so I, I guess hour. maybe I was complaining that uh, the the length of time everything was taking was too <laughs> much, but it's actually you know I, I kind of struck a balance with it. Um, and with Castleville, it's not like it's too long to do it. It's just that things get done so quickly sure. that you start one thing, and by the time you get to the last thing that you're doing, the first thing is already ready again. So you go back and you start collecting, and you go down the yeah. row. And, then and the it's next just, thing is done yeah, and and so the next thing is done, and the next thing is done, and then you well, have to do this quest and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so, so I mean, but, yeah. in the Clash of Clans, it's, they just notified me that I've been attacked, so i got to go over here on the bombs. <laughs> Plots of gold. And, uh, wow. Well, no, I, I don't even have to do that. I can wait, do it later, because I can always go get revenge on the person oh. who attacked me if I feel like it. Okay. Um, and uh, my daughter has been having fun with an app on my phone that is eluding me. Kids Hair Salon. Oh, my gosh. You just pick a person, and then She's they have hair. Yeah. <laughs> She makes some crazy stuff. She, so it's just like it. the Barbie, like, you remember basically, the old Barbie head bust thing? Yeah, that, yeah basically. You, you you have tools and you, you like, you have to wash the hair first because it's all dirty and stuff. Yeah. And then you color it and style it and cut it. And Very she cool. put she puts rainbow stripes in everybody's hair because rainbows. Yeah. Um, so those are the two That's things awesome. that get used the most on my phone. Right on. Uh, let's go ahead and go into movies. And Johnny, you start movies and TV. Okay. Um, movies. I saw finally uh, Transcendence and Captain America Two at the drive-in. Oh, do you like Transcendence? Oh, is drive-in open? Drive-in's open. Ooh. Yeah. Drive-in season. <laughs> yeah. yeah, except you'll be at camping all well, all summer. Sorry. Yeah. Like, uh, I'll figure something out. Transcendence is actually pretty good. Um, I read some reviews that kind of poo-pooed it. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna do. I think it was gonna be very good. Yeah, including me. It's very cerebral sci-fi. Yeah. It's not action. There's no action at all to speak of. I mean, it's it's got a little bit of action, but it's like it's not. It's the last ten minutes. And, yeah. You know, the movie's over. Um, but the the topics that it deals with are very philosophical and, and cerebral. Um. And I, I, this isn't spoiling anything because it's in the preview. Johnny Depp dies. He's a he's a computer programmer right. attempting to build AI, and he dies, and his brain gets downloaded to the computer. And the the gist of the story is um, he starts making all these advancements because now his brain and his production no, level are you know they're right hand in hand. Yeah. yeah. So they he just makes all these advancements, and they're worried that. It's not really him that it, that the computer is just using his knowledge and his image to manipulate the people of the so world. So, th- do they think that he made an AI and then his consciousness got downloaded and the AI was using his information? Well, there was there already was an AI mm-hmm. that was useful up to a point, mm-hmm. but it had they had not figured out how to give it the ability to interpret. Right. Um, so. They would like it worked for the it worked for the federal government basically, and they would say, okay, the FBI is having a problem with this terrorist organization, mm-hmm. and it would go out and say, okay, well, 
here we it, we've narrowed the computer would narrow down a problem from the entire world to you're most likely in this city and mm -hmm. most likely in these areas. Right. But then it couldn't anticipate what the human reaction would be. Right. They use that base system and they download um, Johnny Depp's brains, you know, his memories, whatever, into and graft it with that system. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, oh, well, is this the computer or is this um, right. the thing? I mean, he does, he has secret projects um, that, you know, like, the, the, yeah, I, I'm trying not to spoil it. The timeline is a little, a little vague in the film. But like his wife will go to sleep one night and she'll wake up the next morning. He's been working the whole time because he doesn't get to sleep. And he's like, hey, we made some advancements. And there's some crazy advancements. And, oh, well. um, I can't wait to see it. I'm excited. It's a, yeah, it's, uh, I was talking to a potential sister-in-law um, at Easter. She um, potential sister-in-law well, is, is Patrick taking applications. Yes, he is. Um, no, <laughs> Sorry, Patrick, that's just the yeah, way it sounded. It's, yeah, it's funny. Um, anyway, she, she and her mom were talking about going to see it, and her mom wanted to see it because it's a Johnny Depp movie. Johnny Depp is not really in this film. His voice is in this film. Yeah, his digital grainy image is on the computer screen. But if you want to see Johnny Depp on on screen acting. Go see Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean because <laughs> he's he's a, a kind of deadpan okay. and on the computer, not so. Nicholas Cage would have been awesome in this movie. You better, no, I will. No, Nicholas Cage likes to emote. That angry finger. Uh oh, I got the angry finger. Nicholas Cage would have wanted to emote too much. So you saw Captain America two? Saw Captain America two. Um, what do you think? Briefly, without spoilers, because right. I don't know if these listeners have. Right. Um, our immediate review. Um, I mean, it has been a month, but whatever. <laughs> I don't. Well, my problem was the environment that I was in. I don't think okay. we saw Transcendence first. We had the baby with us. He's ten months old now. He. We got to the. We got to the drive-in. He ate his last meal for the night and went down to sleep. He woke up. We first off, Tibbs screwed us and started Captain America ten minutes before they were supposed to. Oh. So I miss. I got to the elevator scene with um, Fury and Captain America. I I literally well, missed, started the movie with. You missed Bat Rock the Leaper then. I did. Kind of ticked me off. They, I think they handled Bat Rock pretty well. Did they? Um, because you know instead of giving him superhuman leaping abilities, he was very gymnastic yeah. in his approach. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think that he st it still was handled well. I get what you're yeah. saying. That yeah. that would frustrate the crap out of me. Right. So I I started the movie with. Captain America saying, don't we usually punish, you know, punish rather than, you know, yeah. after the fact rather than before. So that was where I started the film, just to give you an idea. Um, then, trying to remember, again, without spoiling it, right as the gang is coming together, mm -hmm. to, um, when Falcon joins the group, yeah. the baby woke up and he was really weirdly inconsolable. Yeah. Then right as the final fight scene started, my wife complained that she had heartburn and she wanted me to go get her a pretzel because bread makes her heartburn go away. Uh, um, okay. And I was like, I came to the, like, Transcendence is good, but I came to this movie yeah. to watch Captain America. Sorry. And that did caused you get any of the pretzel, though? Did, what? did you get to eat any of the pretzel? Yeah, after the movie was over, I went and bought a pretzel. But... <laughs> There was a, there were, so there were moments, like I said, I missed the beginning 10 minutes or so. Yeah. I missed some bits while the baby was screaming and I missed some bits while the big fight was yeah. getting started. I did not care for the wings that they, the way they made I was okay with that. Falcon? Perfectly fine. Are you with kidding that. me? The wings. Okay. Falcon's you guys wings. Are getting too comic nerdy. Yeah. That's ridiculous. I, the, the idea of metal wings. Have you, what, what? And him having to flap them like a real bird is ridiculous. He didn't have to I flap them. Yes, he did. He didn't have to. He, he but, but he used did. it to maneuver. Yeah. That's the only thing he used the flapping yeah. for is to maneuver. No. He didn't have to flap them to keep in the air. I thought it was no. But I thought it was awesome. I'm, I, they set themselves up for the next time he appears to have the red hollow um, hard light wings yeah. that are in the comic. Yeah. So I'm fine with that. I, then, okay. And, and again, maybe it was because I had some things going on in the car. Yeah. So, um, 
I was not immersed in the film. The, yeah. the wings, the wings bother me a bit. So I'm gonna go next. Go ahead. We can probably solve the genes together. So yeah, no. Well, no. I uh, I want to talk about the stuff I've been watching. Okay. So uh, let's look at my Netflix. And since we talked last time, I have finished season eight of that '70s show. Totally not worth it at all. It's the worst season ever. Yep. The rest of the show, not bad. Season eight, is, terrible. Is that the only season without Eric? Yeah. Yeah. Also, most of the season without uh, uh, Kelso. Kelso. Yeah. Um, I finished season four of Arrested Development, and I waited very long on that. I was felt very um, disconnected. Felt not just disconnected because the show is just weird anyway, but it felt very underwhelming. Yeah. I was not. At, it was not as good as the first two and a half seasons. Right. Um. I also watched Dread. That's a good movie. I wa- yeah, I like Dread. It's really good. I put it so on the background while I did stuff. I yeah. never watch it because I'm thinking, oh, Matt will get mad if I watch it without him. Whoops! I watched the first two episodes of Dexter and then stopped realizing that Shirley might want to watch that. Yeah, Dexter's good. I was afraid that it was going to be super gory. It um, can be at times. It, it, and it can be at times, but I think it's going to fit within a realm that Shirley will be happy with. Yeah. So I, I stopped that. But it, yeah. the first two episodes were good. It usually limits itself just to blood. There's yeah. not guts. Yeah. No. Often. There, it's, Sometimes. It's there's not, very not often. there's very suggested there's guts. Oh my god. There's very Fringe su- is on Fox. Fringe was on Fox. It's been cancelled. Well or ended. But I mean it's yeah. It's gotta do yeah. with network. Well the, we were watching it and um the guy's chest split open and maggots came out yeah. Yeah. while while we were eating. Yeah, that was a good. That Which was, what was the other show we decided we couldn't uh, watch? Walking it? Oh, Dead. Walking Dead. We can't yeah. stop because, watching that because, because the first time we were eat. the first time we were eating was spaghetti and we were like, oh. Yeah. So, was like, oh. Yeah. Um, I watched the first four episodes of Eureka. That's a good. It's that's okay. A good series. It ends on a kind of a downer. Um, yeah. Uh, ending, but I watched GI Joe Retaliation. I haven't watched that yet. I want to. Didn't you watch that last year? I watched year? it originally. Okay, okay. Since it's on Netflix, Netflix now. Um, I started watching Orphan Black and watched probably four or five episodes of that. It's think? good. It's good. Is that on Netflix? It's on Amazon it's on Prime. Amazon Prime. Uh, Sorry. Um, yeah, it's we have we have Prime that Amazon and... Oh, it's, oh, no, it's BBC America. Yeah, that's why it's I thought it might be BBC somewhere America, else. Yeah, we have Netflix, Prime, Hulu. and Hulu. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, no, I started the first episode of New Girl and shut it off. Because yeah. I love Zoe Deschanel, 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 but in this she's really hyper and annoying, and I was just like, I'm done. She kind of mellows out, but it's because that that first episode she's supposed to be manic, but yeah, I just, yeah, I'm not into it either. But I've I've seen a few episodes, and then I'm mad. Um, I watched the f- I watched like two minutes of Parks and Rec, and I was done. No, you should go give that. I'll I'll, shot. I'll give it a push, but I don't know. Um, I watched Click. Yeah. Yeah. Love click makes me cry every time. Yep, he texts me and said you can't watch it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. I watched all of Young Justice season one. I'm on episode nine. It's, it's good. really good. I loved uh, Mazo. Yeah, yeah. That was a good episode. Um. I watched Fifth Element. Yeah. I've watched some Justice League. We watched The Croods last night. What'd you think of that one? It's not bad. Gwen loves it's okay. It. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But now, dun dun dun. dun dun dun. Yeah, now we've been doing that all day because that was fun. Um, all in all, I, those that's what I've been watching mostly. But um, I would really suggest if you have, if you have, if somebody hasn't seen Dread, go watch Dread. It's yeah. totally worth it. Dread I know you really said that really it's uh, it's uh, it's Carl Urban. Um, I think McCoy and the new J.J. I, 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 I think uh, what was it that you said? That it was based on another, it had very similar plot to another, like, movie from Japan, maybe, or just another movie in general, where they I go remember, through an apartment building and. Anyway, I remember saying that, but now what I said is drawing a blank. Yeah. What? But what this does, the Stallone Dread, did not capture the feel of the comic. Yeah. Very well. It was a little too campy and a little too cartoony. Yeah. This dread really gets the gets to the bare bones well, of the comic. And as dumb as it sounds, the biggest problem I have with the stolen dread is that dread takes his helmet off. Because in the oh, comic yeah, books, yeah. he never takes it off, and you you never see dread's face ever. Well, I think we can we can thank uh, who's the guy that played Agent Smith. Uh, his name's blanking on me. Oh yeah, 
when he played beef, beef, and beef. Yeah, and yeah, Vendetta, yeah. That changed a lot. Well, and I think Carl, Carl Urban is not doesn't have the ego that Stallone does, and I don't mean oh, that yeah. in a terrible way. No, but Stallone, when Stallone made that movie. He yeah, had, I mean, it, he that was yeah that was yeah. the thing he could do. But Dread is, that that movie's really really good. Pulls the comic really well. Yeah. Um, introduces a character in Anderson solidly. Oh yeah. It shows. Um, I love the bit with the psychic. The it has a uh, Cersei. Lannister in it as the villain as M- Mama. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize. I was like, she looks familiar. She yeah. looks familiar. And then I was I like, did, oh, I did the same thing when I watched. Yeah. So it, um, it was really good. And then I love Fifth Element. She's also in something else now, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's what's her face. Yeah. Um, like an ongoing series or just a movie? Um, oh, I can see it in my head. I don't know. No, Is it something not. recent? I thought we saw her in a movie preview and then something else, and I was like, oh, that's. So she was in 300, she, maybe? Oh, yeah. Was she the wife? She's, yes. she's the queen, yeah. Nice. I forgot about that. That would be it. In both 300 and 300 Rise of an Empire, yeah. right. which no one saw. Is it out? Oh, yeah. I don't want to go I didn't it. came out in March. I didn't even know. No. I know, right? Come on, Hollywood. That, like, it's because it's because it, I think it was a bad movie. That's why they moved it from last summer to March, and that's why they didn't promo it, because they knew they weren't going to make their money back off of advertising that's ridiculous so um but that's i would have gone see that, that's the majority of what i've been watching we went and saw something else oh we went and saw uh a football movie draft day oh, draft, draft day. day it was pretty good yeah it wasn't it wasn't like the best thing ever but it was pretty good yeah. so. um another thing i watched on um netflix that i want to talk about real quick mm-hmm. is an anime series i don't know if our listeners have heard of it it's called modica magica you're not. You know, just shut down. No, you're, no, you're fine. Yeah. Keep going. It's a magical girl series with a twist. I was kind of hoping Jesse would be here today, so I could suggest it to him because I think he would enjoy it. Um, it. It sets itself up like the cutesy magical girl, talking pet, you know, all this stuff. Sabrina? Uh, no. Anime has its own category called magical girl mm-hmm. where you get a, a, a pretty costume and you have to go through a transformation sequence, and the powers are all about love and justice and, and all this stuff. So Sailor Moon is a... Sabrina and the Power Rangers. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, if you wanted to... I mean, if you... Yeah, if, if that's your yeah. frame of reference, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Power Rangers is, is a uh, gender-inclusive you know, version of that, where you can have boys and girls on the same team. Power, that's, um, that has another name for it, though, called Sentai. Mm-hmm. Uh, magical girls have a lot of emotions involved in their stories, but uh, this one is set up. Um, the magical girls hunt witches who leave behind grief seeds, and then there's something. There's a, a real connection between the witches and the magical girls that um, you don't usually see, and it takes it down a really dark path. It's a really good. It's not. Uh, it's a really good anime. It's not. Girly, it's you know, it's definitely got kind of a dark bent to it. Um, it doesn't have the cheesecake, um, you know, uh, fan service that that some shows have. So it's you know, it's good for all the ages that could handle the emotional uh, drama that the show has. So I think anybody who's interested in it should check it out. It's only twelve okay. episodes long, okay. So it's a real quick watch. What's the name of it? Magica, Modica, Magica. Modica. Maybe mispronouncing it because you know, Japanese names are different than Westerns. And I apologize if that's offended anybody. But how do you spell Modica? I don't know. I think it's in. I think it's actually M A O D A K A. D A. No. It's not coming up, but that doesn't mean anything. Try Magica. That's true. And but anyway. Worth checking out. It's a real short anime. It's real good. So M A D O K A. Okay. Madoka. I would Madoka assume Madoka. that's how you. Again, but yeah. In the uh, in the car- in the show itself, they hardly ever say her name. Okay. In a non-fast, you know, easily yeah. understandable way. So. Okay. Worth checking out. Anything else TV wise? Young Justice. Young Justice. That's it. I finished Star Wars: The Clone Wars. Yeah. It's Hate like it. six seasons, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Hate it. Really. Yeah. Why'd you watch the whole thing then? I didn't know that I was going to hate it until Wait. the middle of season four. Oh, and that's when you stopped. I, well, <laughs> I should have. 
But I kept I watched it all just to see the last season that was exclusive to Netflix. Oh, okay. Um, they have a story that tries to explain Anakin's destiny, but because this series is happening in between episodes two and three, they can't. He can't fulfill his destiny, so they just throw it out the window. His destiny because, is to bring balance to the Force, right? They give it. They give an explanation of what that's supposed. To, what that actually means. Balance is balance. No, there's a there's a planet where an old guy who is the um, physical manifestation of the cosmic force has a son who is the physical manifestation of the dark side, and a daughter who is a physical manifestation of the light side. If either one of them got off the planet, they would wreak havoc by throwing the universe out of balance. That's dumb. And the old guy is dying. This so is Anakin really has to take his place because he's the only one who can control the Force enough to keep them on the planet. Except for, you know, Yoda. Right. Who, who may not be as powerful, but is well, right. well beyond but they, that. But that's his, that's his destiny. The, uh, they even go so far as the dark, the, the dark side shows Anakin what he's going to become. And Anakin goes crazy, and the old guy erases his memory That's of dumb. that of those visions. That's really dumb. Yeah, that really whole idea dumb. is dumb. Um, then at the end of the at the end of the series, um, there a clone trooper discovers um, Order sixty six. He discovers the truth about it. Um, turns out all the clones have an organic computer chip in their head. Something that's never organic computers has not been a thing in Star Wars ever before. Yeah. So that kind of ticked me off, but whatever. Um, he discovers the thing, um, gets like goes through this whole thing, discovers the plot. He gets back to Coruscant, gets back to Anakin, and they're like, "Okay, buddy, you did a good job. We're gonna send you to the hospital now." Done. It never comes out again. They don't explain what happens to the clone. They don't explain what happens to the information that he gave Anakin. They just drop it. <sighs> then the final the final couple episodes, Yoda and R two go out and Yoda's trying to learn the trick to manifest his ghost after he dies because Qui-Gon didn't get it. Except in the third film, Qui-Gon gets it. <laughs> so Yeah, okay. So surely yeah, anyway. one of you <laughs> Wow. It. So um, that sounds sorry. no that no you're I'm fine. Sorry. That sounds terrible. I'm now I don't want to watch the Wars. No, don't don't no. Vikings. You've been watching Vikings? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you liking that? Yep. And um, I've been trying to get you to watch uh, the next season of Game of Thrones, which you're not. Yeah, we haven't done that yet. And I haven't season started three? watching the new season of Wolf and Black yet, but that's on my list. Yeah, uh, it's on HBO Go, mm -hmm. so we have access yeah, to it. Still. Um, but we haven't gotten that far yet. Uh, no French. You haven't been watching French. I left French for you, so you can uh, talk about it. Yeah, we watch French. You know. French is a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. So, I watch I like on it. Originally. so, um, and yeah, Welcome Black Vikings because Vikings is awesome, and they just announced that they're doing a third season, so we're in their second season, and um, yeah, yeah, it looks good. All right, on. Uh, yeah. well, we want to thank some people today for helping us with our podcast and mm -hmm. with our Kickstarter, yeah, the whole list. Oh, yeah, yeah, so we want to thank. And I apologize for any mispronunciations. It's not my fault. There was not pronunciation guide sent with these. Uh, George Bob Diggy Chipples, Scott Big Daddy T. Troiano, Shirley N. God, Win Nerds Collide, part of the Nerds Collide, the Omega Nerds Network, Fidget Press, and John Graham, uh, Philip Durham, Todd Jeffcoat, Brandon Black, David Sokolowski, Uncle Fast Eddie, Tyson Vick, uh, James Sirius Buckhorn, and Game Paradise. So thank you one and all. For your help, uh, we plan on thanking you for the rest of the month of May, and even though this isn't May, uh, oh, we're not. We're, this, going out? this will be going out today. Oh well, okay. Ish tomorrow probably. Ish. Ish. Um, next week you will find Chronos up in the podcast feed. You know, everybody loves Chronos. Mm -hmm. If you haven't heard it, it's a uh, Benicio del Toro quote unquote vampire movie. Yeah. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, it's only like an hour and. 35. Yeah, so there. it's worth checking out. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, we'll and listen then, to our podcast. And then the week after that, we will be um, talking about sci fi and our favorite uh, settings for that. So oh. probably some fantasy, or some fantasy. No, not fantasy oh. whatsoever. Probably some uh, Star Trek, Star Wars, Firefly, oh. 
Star Wars, you, you know, you can have the argument of whether it is sci-fi or fantasy, like they did on Major Spoilers. I, uh, we could have that argument, but I, uh, it's in space with spacey things. It makes it sci-fi. Okay. Well, you should listen to that episode of Major Spoilers. I, I, then. I should. should. Um, Star Wars is a platypus. <laughs> Say hi. Well, once we shut down, I'll tell you all about it. So, um... With that in mind, if you guys are headed to Indie PopCon, and that's coming up in just over a month, we suggest you head over to our website and click on the Want to Go to Indie PopCon uh, banner and head right over there and buy your tickets. That will put in our code, which is MQUI, and that will get us a little credit for helping you along your way to purchasing tickets. I highly suggest everyone goes because people like Hodor will be there, as well as the Esme. Esme. Uh, as well as the dude what is from MST3K. Can't think Joel. of his name. Joel. Joel, Joel from uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000. Paul and Storm. Paul and Storm will be there doing a free concert as long as you are part of the Indie PopCon experience. So uh, one day tickets are either 20 or 25, probably both, I would expect. 20 for Friday, 25 oh. for Saturday, 20 for Sunday. And $45 for the entire weekend. It's not on there, I don't oh. think. Um, but I would suggest you guys come out. We, we will have a couple of tables, and we will be happy to talk to you about all things podcast-related. Uh, we'll we be also, selling sketches. Yes, John. We'll custom be art. Selling Request custom art. Uh, hopefully that will go over well, and we, it, everyone won't have tentacles. If well, they want them. I mean, the with Byrne losing all of his sanity, clearly yeah. tentacles is the next step. Right. Um, and we will be doing a panel there, too. So we hope to talk to you guys and see you all there. Um, you can always head over to our website and read, read our stuff there. You can go to Twitter. Uh, find us on Facebook and we will talk to you guys real soon and that's it tonight for us on the Nerds Domain podcast you can always send us an email at nerdsdomain at gmail.com or catch us on Twitter Matt is at quiet Scott is at underscore big daddy t underscore Johnny is at fool's mass Justin is at j underscore Kimmet and Shirley is at sned70 or the website at Nerds Domain you can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash nerdsdomain we want to thank John Shop for our music. If you'd like to help us out, head over to the website and buy something through our Amazon link. It's the same price you always pay, but a little bit comes back to us. If you enjoy our podcast, we encourage you to give us a review on iTunes and let us know what you think. We also have t-shirts available over at slashloot.com at tinyurl.com slash shirts. We'll talk to you real soon. This has been a production of the Omega Nerds Network, the network where it's on.